Building better relationships. I always say it's like dropping a pebble into a pond. The ripples get bigger and bigger. If I become friends with Marty Boone and she introduces me to Sheila McDonald, here I am. And now I know all of you. And how does that work versus getting all excited and going out and selling more for three months? This builds and it sustains. And entrepreneurs and businesses and management teams who get that will understand that they hold the key to their success simply by taking care of their relationships. If you could say, hey, Lori, could you bring someone from New York Life? I'm dying to meet him, and the three of us will go to lunch. Would you have a problem with that? And through an introduction and networking, I've managed to meet the guy I want to meet who's in charge of everything at New York Life. So networking is fabulous. I really cover a lot about how to work a networking lunch in the very best way. We all have a tendency to want to sit with our friends and you don't get to meet the people. You should really talk to the people at your table during lunch. What you want to do when you take your clients out is you really want to find that common ground. You really want to find out what they're interested in so that you can have a great conversation. How about travel? You recognize this picture? The Colosseum in Rome, maybe you've been there. Imagine if I came to you, you're my client, and I said, you know, I'm planning my vacation this year and I don't know where to go. What's the best vacation you've ever been on? Rome? Okay. So we talk about that and what did you do while you were there? And the next thing you know, you're off and running talking about all your trips or your cruises or what's going on. Um, so you want to find the common ground. I've talked about gardening for an hour. You try and grow something in the rocks and sand in the desert, okay? <laughs> a lot of people want to talk about their kids. I don't have kids. I talk about the Princess Georgie. <laughs> so, and I have gone to lunch with people who have dogs or cats, and we talk about the dogs for the whole time. I got a huge sale with one of the downtown properties because I showed her that her main market was 35-plus black women who play quarter slots. She bought me that day, 10 times a day, five days a week for the rest of the time that she was the marketing director at that hotel. I didn't tell her anything she didn't know, but I was telling her something so she knew she could trust me because it was exactly who her market was. And that's the kind of information service you can provide that helps your clients to do a better job at their job. So anytime you provide information or service, you'll never have a problem getting your foot in the door. But have you ever been to lunch with someone and they go to pay with cash? What do you say? Well, let me chip in. Let me get the tip. Let me help. You always want to use a credit card. It's authoritative. You just put it in and it's done. When I first went to print my book, I talked to a printer. He invited me to lunch. He had faxed me rates and his printing quotes. And we sat there and the check sat on the table forever. And I couldn't stand it. I am a salesperson and I just wanted to grab the check and handle it. So I finally said, without saying I've got it, I said, Let's see what we've got here. And he says, oh, here, here. And he reaches in his back pocket. He goes, let me get the tip. And he's trying to sell me something. Did he get the deal? You know that. He is not my printer. Oprah Winfrey said that when she first interviewed Robin Williams, that she was a basket case. You've all seen Robin Williams interviewed, especially a lot lately. And it's like trying to nail down a mosquito. He's all over the place. He's not following his guidelines. He's not responding to the questions as they were asked. And she was freaking out. And she finally, just her little light went off inside and she said, let it go. Find the flow. And she knew exactly to let things go the way they were. Robin Williams is a great interview. She was just trying to control the situation too much. So when you go to bring up the subject of business, don't interrupt your client. If they're telling you what they did this weekend with their family or they went boating or they went skiing or whatever they did, you don't say, wait, 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 I want to show you this proposal. You don't interrupt them that way. You find the flow and you make it work for them on their terms. And you don't wait until the check has been settled and everyone's on their way out. Wait, wait, I forgot to show you my proposal. Wait. Do it. You know how much time you have. And sometimes if you have a great proposal and you're actually there to discuss business, when you sit down and say, I'm so excited with what I brought you. It's exactly what we had talked about. It's just what you need for this program, for this event, for this year to help you reach your goals. Let's, let me show you. We'll go ahead and order and I'll show you before the food comes. So you can always play it by ear. There is no one right answer. 
Just find the flow and go with it. What is the one entree you should never order at a business lunch? Who said spaghetti? Come here, I got a present for you. It's an Expect Miracles cup because miracles can happen over lunch. So congratulations. I've had a lot of girls come up to me and say, you know, I took my clients out and I don't drink, so I didn't know how to order wine and I was really uncomfortable. So I let them order it and they ordered Opus One. It was $350 a bottle. And then the waiter came by and said, want another bottle? And they said, sure. Well, sure they did. And now you've got a $700 check and you haven't even ordered soup yet so you never want that to happen there's an easier way to order wine even though i think it's okay to have a glass of wine with your clients or a cocktail it is not okay to get a drunk in front of your clients and the problem with drinking is you usually don't know you've had too much till you're there and it's still coming so really take it easy don't ever your friends might forgive you for something like that but your clients never will so really and if you're going to a networking event after work lunch was at noon you're talking about having a cocktail at five o'clock, you're drinking on an empty stomach. I can't tell you how many times I've gone to the drive-thru at Taco Bell, had a couple tacos, or if you get to a place and you didn't have a chance to stop, go park yourself in front of the buffet or the food first. Eat something, get some food in your stomach, and then walk around with your glass, and then rotate between a cocktail and a glass of water or a soda, and take it easy. But here's a little word, O. Oh. Say O oh with curiosity. Oh. Very good. How about uh, affection, the doggy? Oh. Okay. And surprise. Oh. You see how easy it is. One two-letter word just meant six or seven different things because of how you said it. So always regard the tone of your voice. Here's a great sentence. I did not say I saw him take the money. It has eight different meanings. I did not say I saw him take the money. I did not say I saw him take the money. I did not say I saw him take the money, and so on. It's a great exercise. This is a picture of me with my friend Famous Amos, the cookie guy, Wally Amos. He says, picture everybody with MMFS on their forehead. Make me feel special. It's the very best way to build relationships. Make it about them. Take people out to lunch or share a meal with them and make it about them. Ask them what's going on in their lives. Thank you very much for this opportunity to be here. It's been such an amazing time.